Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. So fresh, so face, so bubbly, so fun, so cool. Except for the fact that she's pretty much wrong in all of her public statements. And the purpose of this video is to show you that a small gust of wind can blow over her house of cards in a matter of seconds. Case in point, a recent boycott against the New York Post for this cover, which they say is an incitement of violence or mean to Representative Ilhan Omar for saying that 9-11 was some people doing something. Now, besides the obvious problem of mischaracterizing this mass terrorist attack, it was said in front of a care event, the Council for American Islamic Relations. So obviously, she's not going to get up there and say that this was an Islamic terrorist attack because it would really hurt her point of view and really wouldn't relate to the audience that well. Now, besides the fact that people who agree with AOC probably wouldn't be buying this newspaper anyways, isn't everybody pretty much already boycotting newspapers across the board. I mean, pretty much haven't we decided that we're going to go digital? Next, she and others prevented a huge Amazon campus with a bunch of infrastructure from being built in New York City. Why? Because of the $3 billion in government incentives New York was going to give her. One of the reasons being quoted as the campus would accelerate gentrification in nearby neighborhoods and contribute to the displacement of New Yorkers in low-income communities. I mean, that's a fair point, I guess. But what will displace New Yorkers more? not having the 25,000 jobs that you cost them. Probably something about the president that maybe a lot of people don't get or understand unless you kind of have that New York context is he acts like, you know, he's one of these shady real estate developer guys that may or may not be involved with the mob. Like that's like the personality type. <laughs> that is elicited um and like all new yorkers know that guy like i've bartended for that guy i waited tables on for that guy and the whole style of it is that you do everything even michael cohen talked about this during his testimony to oversight is that he doesn't say hurt this person he doesn't say bribe this person he doesn't say um you know do X, Y explicit thing. He creates in a, a huge environment of suggestion. Now what she doesn't know, obviously, is that in the early 90s, Trump went to Congress to solicit them to get the mob out of Native American casinos. Trump being in the casino business, he saw that the mob was infiltrating the casinos pretty much from the top down and said that the FBI didn't have enough people in there and wasn't doing enough to remove the mob from those casinos. But to sit here and listen, as people are saying that there's no organized crime, that there's no money laundering, that there's no anything, and that an Indian chief is going to tell Joey Killer to please get off his reservation is almost unbelievable to me. Something I think I've spoken a lot about on this channel is the fact that if you just think of the first counterpoint to your argument, you're already ahead of most people, probably about half of people don't think of the first counterpoint to their argument because they rarely get challenged. And that's all you need to do to be ahead of the game. So here's AOC saying, oh, there's just so many things you can impeach Trump for. And the host just says, okay, then name some of them. Uh, um, uh. You could reach in a bag <laughs> and pull so many things out that are impeachable of this president. I support impeaching this president. Two and three? Two and three. Um, I think two would be uh, tax fraud. Mm -hmm. And number three, um, man. I mean, there's just there's just so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me ask like you. Like the census, the, there's, right. uh, you know, I I can't even the the tax bill. It's like what can wh like there's just so much. <laughs> So she's saying you should impeach Trump for putting the question on the census of are you a citizen, kind of an insane stance to make, and for putting through the tax bill, a bill that was put through and approved by all the branches of government, and something that's in effect to this day. So impeach a president for a tax code that you disagree with, that's pretty interesting. So that's not all, of course. She also thinks the world's going to end in 12 years. Millennials and people and, you know, Gen Z and all these folks that come after us are looking up and we're like, the world is going to end in 12 years if we don't address climate change. And your biggest issue is your your biggest issue is how are we going to pay for it? And like, this is the war. This is our World War Two. 
I get it. It comes from a UN climate study where it says if we don't do anything in 12 years, such as limit the climate change, the actual temperature of the earth, that there's going to be irreversible damage. But that's not what she says. She said the world's going to end in 12 years and people applaud that and they cheer. And there's so many th things wrong with what she says in such a short period of time. She really believes this. She really believes it's a World War II uh, era. Uh, she says this in her Green New Deal. They say they need to ramp up production to World War II levels to save everything. And there's a lot of ignorance that goes into all these positions. Like the fact that the UN is biased. The fact that these things have been said before. The fact that she talks about younger people like she's one one of them and talks about all these older generations that just don't understand it when she's almost 30. Who are these people that just sit there and believe this? It's her. It's people just like her. And it's just so tiresome and predictable because she says things and says really anything as long as it sounds right to her and listens to anything as long as it sounds right to her without any deep dive into the facts or the history or the logic surrounding her opinions. And I was reminded of this on a recent episode of the Joe Rogan Experience with the Adam Ruins Everything guy where they get into a debate on trans athletes. Now Adam wants to eliminate the category of men and women in athletics but when questioned on this he really doesn't seem to know why. Adam makes a claim, Joe rebukes it, and then Adam coils back into the I'm not an expert on this subject or I haven't seen that study or I haven't read as much into it as maybe I should have so we should get somebody else on here to answer. Now that reminds me of AOC in the sense that it's pretty obvious that he's never been really challenged on the subject. He doesn't really have any research on the subject. He's just going with what he feels and what he's been told and what sounds right. And even though, again, he's not an expert on the subject, he has very strong opinions on it that are very solid and he speaks from a real authority on the subject. And like I said, it's also tiresome and predictable and just like her continuing to pretend that she's from the Bronx, even though it's been disproven that she didn't really grow up there at all, she continues to use this as reasons for doing things like talking with a fake accent to a group of black people. I'm proud to be a bartender. Ain't nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with working retail, folding clothes for other people to buy. There is nothing wrong with preparing the food that your neighbors will eat. AOC's not some rough and tough bartender from the Bronx, you guys, that really made it in the mean streets and built her way up from the streets and out of poverty and all the way into Congress. And it's the greatest story and Sandra Bullock's gonna play her in a movie. <laughs> she didn't just grow up in the Bronx. She's not, she's not from, she's not Jenny from the block. She just pretends she did. And she's actually from a place called Yorkton Heights, which is pretty affluent and, and pretty well off. And she's been called out, called out on this many times, and she just keeps going with it. So here's an example of that. But Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, for her entire life, beginning in kindergarten, <laughs> when she was just barely conscious, uh, it lived in Yorktown Heights, which is a very wealthy suburb. Uh, it's a town in Westchester County. And coincidentally, it's the town right next to the town that I grew up in, except the town that she grew up in is much more homogenous, much less diverse, much more affluent than the town that I grew up in, and, but it's right next door, and, and uh, we so she, but she in, keeps pretending that she's from the Bronx. So anyway, she tweets this out, and I just start tweeting out and pointing out that uh, she didn't grow up in the Bronx. So I say, you grew up in Yorktown Heights. Uh, the, the average household uh, wealth of a, uh, you know, uh, in, in Yorktown Heights, in this suburb, is $1.2 million dollars. And I say this because when you compare it, the average household wealth in the Bronx is about $400,000. So it's well more than double, almost triple, in Yorktown Heights where she, she responds. responds. And she says, things. quote, in which a Republican, that's me, literally tries mansplaining my own childhood and life to me. And in true mansplaining form, he's doing it wrong with an great degree of confidence. It begs the question, is the GOP really sending us their best? Now, do you see why this is so tiresome? Do you see why I make a video about how easily wrong she's proven on pretty much anything? If you dare question the lies or the inconsistencies, well, then you're mansplaining. You're a bigot or, you know, you just, I, I'm just not an expert on it. Don't ask me. I have all these concrete opinions and I know exactly what I'm talking about to anybody else. But as soon as you come back at me, I'm, I'm not an expert. We're going to have to get a different person here to answer that for me. This, of course, is a great transition to the last point of her inability to defend any of her positions. Ah, oh, yes, the debate. The DNC, and, <laughs> the DNC members' greatest enemy, the bane of their existence, the debate. 
Ben Shapiro challenged her to a debate once for charity. She didn't reply. Here how it goes. Ocasio refuses to respond to, Sh to Shapiro debate offer. Just like catcalling, I don't owe a response to unsolicited requests from men with bad intentions. The bad intentions of debate. <laughs> also like catcalling, for some reason, they feel entitled to one. You're a politician and a challenge to a debate from a notable person in the news media is sexual harassment. It's also predictable. It's also tiresome. I love it, but I also hate it.